Hey, Ty. Good afternoon. How you doing? How you doing? Um, hey, obviously with several people not able to be there on the travel party, I'm just curious, like, has that affected how you guys have been able to prepare as you normally would for a game with, with several people missing? No, I mean, we have the ample amount of staff that we need. Um, you know, um, no excuses. Like I said, next man up has been our mentality all season, but we have the people we need um, to play the game. And then with, with Marcus, is there an update? I mean, obviously it's been day to day, but are you, are you hopeful he can come back in the next week, let's say? I mean, I just wasn't sure if there was an update on where he stands. I'm hopeful he can come back whenever he gets back. <laughs> but um, he is, he is um, have a lot of pro uh, progress and um, hopefully we'll see him soon, but I can't give you a day or a date. Okay, let's move over to uh, Tomer. Hey, Ty. How you doing? I'm sorry. Uh, um, curious, we've, we've seen, I think, a handful of games now of Devin Booker and Chris Paul together. Um, they got a good core there. What have you seen from the Suns early on in this season? Um, you know, Monty Williams, his teams, you know, they always play hard. They're always scrappy. Um, they're always prepared. And, um, you know, he's kind of got his imprint on his team, you know, early on in the season, you know, especially last year going into the bubble, going eight and oh. Um, giving that team a young team confidence and then coming back and adding Chris Paul, um, who's a future Hall of Famer, um, who's one of the best leaders in the NBA. And you add that to the mix, I mean, you're going to have a really good team. So uh, I think taking on Monty's identity of playing hard every single night and executing. Okay, let's move over to uh, Miriam. Hey, Ty. Good to see you. Um, obviously, with all the protocols and all the things that you guys are going through, it's not like you need reminders about, you know, the coronavirus, but but when something like this does happen, does it sort of like wake everybody up once again and just you know make you want to be extra extra careful? Um, we always want to be careful. Um, you know, just the best thing for us is that everyone's healthy. Um, it's just feeling pretty good, so um, that's the most important. But you know we got to follow the protocols. Um, we know it's a scary time right now. Uh, we're not taking this lightly, and um, you know we just want to make sure we do everything we can to follow the protocol. Let's move over to. Uh... Justin Russo. Hey, Coach. Uh, Phoenix presently boasts the top half-court defense in the league, and I was just wondering what your early season impressions of watching them on that end are and who specifically has stood out to you in that regard when going through film. Um, they just shared the basketball. Um, you know, if teams are, are blitzing Devin Booker, he's moving the ball, he's not trying to fight it. Um, the same thing with CP. And when you got one of the best assist guys in the league like CP, you know, guys are going to get open shots. Um, you know, he's going to play the right way. He's going to make sure he hits the open man. And with that being said, you see guys um, shooting the ball very well. You know, so Bridges is shooting about 50% from three. Uh, I think Cam's shooting about 43. So um, they're really doing a great job of moving the basketball and sharing the ball. Move over to Owen. Hey, Ty, uh, you've talked about how important it is to be able to adapt with everything that's going on um, around with COVID and everything like that. I'm wondering, since you guys found out about the staffers, what have you guys been able to do as a team in the last 24 hours? I mean, were you able to shoot around today? What's it been like? Did anything change for you guys as far as what you were normally doing? No, um, nothing changed. Uh, we continue to do what we've been doing. Um, you know, guys are prepared, you know, like I said, ready for the game tonight. So um, there's no distraction, you know, with this thing going on all year. You know, you never know what's going to happen. So we got to be prepared, next man up, and we're ready to play the game tonight. Okay, we're going to move over to Joe Varden. Hey, Ty. Um, and that's right. <laughs> it's a historic day. Um, staying on this topic, um, reading the ESPN report, it, you know, it looks like you're, the support staff basically went to a presidential suite uh, for a, a New Year's Eve meal, which I, I think would be against protocol. Um, so I'm just, my question to you would be, is this upsetting that this happened or do you kind of stay away from something like that because they're all adults and, you know, you're supposed to no, try to make it? No. You know, I, st I stay away. You know, I'm not quite sure what really happened because I wasn't there or I wouldn't be able to close the game tonight. So um, I can't tell you everything that, you know, exactly happened. So I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, this, this um, coronavirus is just so sensitive. You know, you can touch a doorknob and you can get coronavirus. So, we really don't know how it happened. Um, like I said, the most important thing is everyone's feeling, feeling well and safe. We've got time for two more questions. We'll move over to uh, Joseph. Hey, Ty. How you doing? 
Uh, Friday saw the team open the game hunting Donovan Mitchell while he was on defense, running him through screens and getting him switched on to Kawhi in the post. Is that a Jazz specific wrinkle, or is there a matchup on each team that you're going to try and attack that way throughout the season? Um, a matchup on every team we want to try to attack. You know, just try to you know see if you can get an early foul on, on their best players, and um, sometimes that changes the game for those guys. They get passive, you know, not as aggressive, and so you know if they're going to switch two guards and point guards on the Kawhi, do we want to take advantage of posting him against those guys? If they double team, um, we know the spacing we need to get to. Last question is going to go to Dwayne. Yeah, Coach, um, I'm hearing, obviously, that they're going to have, like, the, you guys are going to have to wear the, the sensors, uh, tracing sensors, uh, I guess, maybe later this week or early next. How does that impact what, you know, guys do in terms of, because from what I'm reading, it's going to be a constant during travel, between travel, during practice. Um, what's the, you know, when you, when you hear that, is that similar to what the bubble was? And, and does that change anything for you, for you guys? Um, it's similar, but, you know, whatever the NBA puts in place, you know, they did a great job last year, you know, with the bubble. And now this year, just trying to, you know, continue the season. So whatever protocol they put in place, we're going to follow those guidelines and do it the best we can.